hello everyone and welcome back to another video from the last video i seen you guys wanted a video on haptic effect so here we go roblox's new beta haptic api offers a far more versatile and powerful approach to haptic feedback leaving haptic service in the dust and before we can even start talking about it this is a beta feature at the time of this recording so we need to enable it and how we do that is you go to file in the top left corner beta features and then scroll down until you see haptic effects and you can click that and then you will have to restart your studio and then you will have everything in there that you need so instead of using a service we now use what's called a haptic effect instance and we can create these instances and store them in our workspace and we can also create them in our scripts so the first thing i'm going to do is insert a local script and starter player scripts and start off with creating the effect so just like how you would create any other roblox instance we're going to say local effect is equal to instance.new haptic effect now let's get into the simple properties of the instance first off we have effect dot looped now this is a boolean and this just makes it so the effect can repeat for as long as you want so it wouldn't just play it once it would keep going on uh, until you would want it to stop and then the next important thing about this is effect dot position and also this has a relationship with radius now position basically for a haptic effect this is a little more advanced because as you can see on screen it looks kind of like a coordinate plane there is an x and y axes that go from negative one to one and so basically you can see all the motors that you can kind of place the haptic on for it to play so for the position you could say negative one on the x and that is by the left hand motor for vr so that's you know more suited for vr and also you can see the radius that also basically is just how much of the effect you actually feel it so if the position was zero on all axes and you set the radius to maybe one or two then that's just a pretty standard one but if you wanted to make it feel more engaging for VR and that sorts of stuff, then you can use position to do that. So just going off of the position, if I don't want anything special, then I can just not set the position and it will automatically be zero on all axes. But if I wanted to increase the radius to make it feel more, you know, just more of a rumble vibration, then I would set this to greater than one so maybe like a three is good so the next thing that we can change is the effects type now this is enum dot haptic effect type and as you can see here there are some predefined ones that roblox has done for us i will get into custom in a second but as you can see there are certain effect types for your needs so for example ui click hover there's a notification explosion and a collision that are all really cool now the best way to test all of these out and what i will be getting to in just a second is roblox has a place to test all of these out with all of the types and you can easily you know if you have a controller or your phone easily test those out so let's go to that place right now okay guys so i welcome you to roblox's haptic world which as you can see on screen have all of the effect types and also sub configurations over here so basically what happens when you go into this game is there are balls that drop from the sky that you can configure here so if they're five you can spawn those and basically when these hit the ground and are next to you then that plays an explosion that you can feel on your device and then also if you connect your device you can also test the effect types on the left side of the screen here so if i were to hover over ui hover i would have 
an effect for that. Same for UI click and all of the other ones. So if you guys want a better understanding of what each one of these is like, then I recommend coming into this place and testing out with all these and also looking at all of these because the ball dropping with the haptics is pretty cool. But for this certain haptic effect, I am going to go with UI click. It's simple, it's nice, and it works just for as a test. So those are basically all the properties. It's very basic. And the only thing we can do now is set the effects parent to our workspace. And then to actually make these work and so we can feel the rumble is we call effect play. So this basically plays the effect uh, whenever you want in your scripts so you can uh, play the same effect over and over again very simple and then as well if you were taking a guess there is effect stop as well to stop the effect for example if you had a loop set to true then that's how you would stop it but now let's head back to these effect types i said earlier that we can create custom effect types and we do this by using float curve keys that you can take a look at on the dev forum but there is an easier way to make custom haptics and this method is more visual and just a lot better of a method of doing it and so how we're going to do this is by using the existing number sequence editor so in my workspace i have this haptic effect and basically if i wanted to set it up so i can change the custom haptic effect then i would want to add some attributes so i'm going to add an attribute and this is going to be a number sequence and i'm going to call it waveform curve and then as well i'm going to add a let's see here number attribute and i'm going to call it waveform length which will be for how long the effect will go on for in milliseconds so i'm going to set this to maybe something like 5000 but just using the number sequence alone won't create our effect so on the dev forum for this and i'll also have the code in the description there is this code that converts a number sequence attribute to a float curve uh, so that's suitable for a custom effect so i'm going to create a local script under this haptic effect and i'm going to copy and paste this code here so now all we have to do is open up the sequence again and we can configure basically how our effect is going to be so you could just create some nonsense like i am here that will work just fine so if you guys want a basic rundown of using float curve keys for your custom haptic effects i'm going to explain this code from the dev forum so basically in this code we are creating a table of float curve keys now here we have four of those keys and so in float curve key dot new the first number here is the time which it is happening so as you can see this is happening incrementally so from 0 to 100 to 300 to 400 and then the second number is the value so at zero the haptic value will be 0 0.3 and then 0 0.4 then 0 0.8 and then 1 and again we're creating the instance setting the type to custom and then you use a set for set waveform keys and you send in those ta that table of float curve keys into that and so that will basically set it and then as i already went over the properties the position uh setting it to one on the x is basically making it setting to the right because you know from it's the the numbers are from negative one to one so it will be on the right side a radius of 0 0.8 setting the parent to the workspace and then playing the effect 
So guys, the last thing I'm going to cover in this video is something very, very cool. And so basically what it is, is creating haptics in your UI without code. So basically in image buttons and text buttons, there is a property called hover haptic effect and press haptic effect, which uses the UI click and UI hover effects. And basically we can use these and set them to haptic effects and we don't have to program it at all. So basically in my haptics folder, I'm going to name this one to click haptic effect. And I'm going to set the type of this, which is already set to UI click. And I'm going to duplicate it and call this one hover uh, haptic effect and set the type to UI hover. And so now in both of these buttons, I can set the pre or the hover haptic effect to the corresponding one in the folder and the same thing for the click. So now if we were to head in the game and try out these buttons without programming, I have a UI hover and as well a UI click system just like that. So if you guys are wanting any more additional information on haptic effect, on screen are the devices Roblox supports for haptic effect. And also on screen will be the devices that Roblox does not support, which would be Android 11 and below. And you can see all of those there. So let's now take a look at the FAQs at the bottom of the dev form post. And there are two of them. And the first one is I currently use haptic service. Will my experience be affected when haptic effects launches in client? Now there is a too long didn't read. And it says your experience will not be affected. And he talks about that. They recommend trying out the new API, but you don't have to. And, and your experience will not be affected. Then the second one is how many haptic effects should I have within my experience? And it says we recommend having less than a hundred haptic effects to maintain performance quality. So there you go. And yeah, guys, this was today's video. If you guys did learn something from this video or you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.